What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be going over my new Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent. These shoes are ridiculous. I can't even believe they're illegal. They're so big. They're like moon shoes. Really cool though, like really cool design. I'm very excited to try these on, you know, but like, damn. Later on in the video, I'll put them next to my Nike Vaporfly Next Percents just to show the height difference. But I'm really excited and interested to know how these are going to feel on my run this morning. So I'm going to get after that. I'm going to let you guys know my first impressions. I have not put these on yet. I have not tried these out. So this is going to be a legit first impression. But first, let's get after this run. Let's go. run was incredible. I'm gonna let you guys know how I feel about these shoes and I think I have some pretty good news about them. But right now I'm just prepping some of my meals for today. Because I have the challenge in three weeks I've been really locking in my diet and making sure I'm eating zero processed foods for the most part. Maybe fit in like one little thing but I really want to eat very clean and make sure my body is ready to perform at its top notch when it comes to the day of the challenge. So I'm just getting this stuff ready and then I have a few clients to train. Then it's going to be getting down to talking about those awesome Nike Alpha Fly Next Percents. All right guys, let's do it. Let's go over the review and my first impressions of the Alpha Fly Next Percent. I'm gonna be, make it a very simple review and just go over the pros the cons, and then the comparison to the previous models, the 4% and the Vaporfly Next Percent. All right, let's start with the pros of the shoe. And for me, this is definitely a pro. I could just slip my foot right in. We go back to that fly knit material. They call it the atom knit material on the Alpha Fly. And there's no tongue issues. Nice that you could just slip these on. Um, I wouldn't compare it to like, you know, easy to put on if you're doing like a triathlon or an Ironman. I know there's like a little time thing where you need shoes that you can put on really quick so you can go right into the run. But they're definitely easier to put on than the previous model, the Vaporfly Next Percent. Then when we go to the midsole and the stack height, it's just ridiculous. There's so much response in it. The Zoomex foam, you know, the more you add, the more support you're gonna have. And the same thing with the AirPods and these things. On top of the plate, these AirPods just spring you forward. I felt like I was just constantly landing more on my forefoot, which is what I need if I wanna run for speed. These definitely do a great job of pushing you forward, helping you run faster. Overall, I, I think this is a great shoe. Um, it's definitely a race day shoe, something that you'd want to do a few runs with before the race, but definitely primarily use it for race day. And the only con I have for the shoe, these are not durable shoes. I would love to run in this shoe every single day, but they wouldn't last me long and they're way too expensive. And not only are they expensive, but they're just hard to find. You know, I, I, I had to get these off a different site. Nike does not have these shoes going right now. And when the mango ones came out, I think they already came out. If not, when they come out, they're gonna be off the shelf like that. So they're hard to come by and they are not too durable. So there's my con. Just when you think they couldn't get a bigger shoe, you can see it, how much bigger the Alpha Fly stack height is. When you compare these two, you know, this one is obviously the winner. It's got the carbon plate. It has more response. These AirPods are sick. The knitting, I like how they went back to that, that knit material because you can slip your feet right in the shoe. But again, the stack height difference is just crazy. They have definitely improved. I think Nike is the top dog in race day shoes right now. With the tongue and the vapor weave material, it just always got caught up. The morning of the marathon, I was like putting these on and then I was like, oh, it's not comfortable enough. I kept feeling it like fold over. So I had to like take them off, put it back on. It was just a pain in the ass. Especially on race day, when you're already you know, flustered, getting ready to start the race. I'm not saying that these two are much different. They're very comparable. The stack height is bigger. 
These have the AirPods. Overall, I really like the shoe. Had a great first run in them. I'm excited to do my 10K in this shoe, and um, we'll see if that helps me reach my goals. Showed you the pros, showed you the cons. The only one con I have is that it's a little expensive and they don't last long, but then again, it is a race day shoe, and that's what they make these shoes for, and Nike does a great job uh, making other shoes that are affordable that will last much longer, like the Pegasus and the Tempo Next Percent. There's my review slash first impression, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, um, I am three weeks out from my challenge and I've been training for like two and a half months now and I just want to give you guys a little update on how I'm feeling and just overall how all of this training has been. Going into it, I really, you know, I did some research of concurrent training and I, I didn't really have an idea of how I was going to feel at this point right now. I thought, man, with all this training, I could be feeling really beat up and this this might not go as I plan it to go. I put together a really smart program where I balanced everything out almost perfectly. I had intensity days, volume days. I split it apart during the week. I made sure I'm giving my body optimal rest and I'm doing all I can to recover whether that be eating good, nutritious, non-processed, whole foods, um, and doing some mobility, stretching, and getting plenty of sleep. And with getting that optimal rest and optimal recovery, it really helped me sustain this kind of program. And then I realized that's the recipe. Keeping it simple and being consistent will get you where you wanna be as long as you are progressing. Now, if you're not progressing, then you know it's time to just readjust maybe you have to take away some intensity take away some volume you got to just reassess as long as you're moving forward you got to keep it simple and keep it consistent and that that is definitely the recipe so i just wanted to hop on and let you guys know how this training has been going and how much of a success it has been for me and to ask you guys if you have any questions about my training and to let me know in the comment section below you know, anything I didn't cover or anything I did cover and you have more questions, please ask me anything. Or if you just want to know more about hybrid training or concurrent training, ask me anything and I will be more than happy to answer. Right now I'm getting some stretching in, mobility, opening up my hips. I have a heavy squat day tomorrow, so I want to be ready for that. Another big weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of training. Recently, I've been doing Friday, Saturday, Sunday because that's going to be the challenge, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I've been squatting heavy Friday, running fast on Saturday, and doing my long runs on Sunday. It's been working out great. I'm three weeks out, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this journey of mine, doing the 444 challenge. And yeah, that's all. And I'll see you guys soon. Later.